Hey, Megan. Yeah? Uh, roughly what time do you think we'll be on bottom? Asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> in like an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. Hour 15? Yeah. Okay, thank you.
So Jake, do you actually have to do anything in this scenario? Um, I am monitoring the uh, delta between the vehicles. So the delta is our, our basically the um, depth difference between Argus and Hercules and also watching the heading to make sure we're not spinning around. Um, and then the, but the main thing for this transect is I'm just trying to keep the vehicle going down at 10 meters a minute. So I'm just slightly adjusting the vertical thrust mm. to, uh, um, it's kind of up and down between like 10 and 11 meters a minute, but not much. <laughs> but not completely autopilot either. No, you can't, yeah, it's not, not autopilot. Still gotta watch, um, make sure everything's happy. And Sean, do you know if anyone is monitoring or who's monitoring this right now? Not 100% sure who's monitoring, um, but there's a very strong interest from our partners at the University of Munich. Mm. That's our project down here, the Straw Project. So um, during the previous dive, they were all very excited and congregating, having a watch party. Oh, yeah. I saw they made a cake or something. Yeah, they made a, a very eccentric looking cake <laughs> of uh, the straw project. Um, it was very impressive. Yeah. And yeah, so I don't know if they're tuning in right now, but depending on what time it is when we get down there, maybe they'll say hi. Sure, I think they're nine hours ahead of us, so yeah. it's a reasonable time for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Megan, have you been paying attention to the Wigglies? Oh, that pink wiggly thing that went by? Was it pink, Sean, or? The uh, they're more kind of white, white wigglies. Well, there's a lot of things that are wiggly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 
probably Polly Keats. Yeah, you're probably right. I was thinking Cadenaths, but maybe Could they're more vertical. Cadenaths. Uh, Cadenaths uh, kind of swim like fish. Yeah. Um, and they and they also kind of dart, so they have a very distinctive swimming. Yeah, like up if and down. If they undulate, kind of then they're probably polychaetes. All right. If they kind of look like fish in the back end is just wiggling, then it's likely a ketamath. Okay. Hmm. And then I saw a pink wiggly thing that looked like a nematode. A nematode. A nematode. <laughs> oh. So. Nematodes are roundworms. Nematians are kind of flat, like in tongue-like. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're kind of weird. Do they become a fish's tongue? Do they what? <laughs> Do they <laughs> substitute a fish's tongue? Or are oh, those no, other those things? Oh, no, those are isopods. Okay. They're just, they're, they're free living ones in the water column and, and they just kind of, they just look like a tongue. <laughs> yeah. But they're not parasitic. Though some of them could be parasitic, but you wouldn't see them. Oh, well, that's a wiggly. What do yeah. you think that is? Probably a ketonaf. Oh, okay, okay. Because the way it stopped. Yeah. So like it stopped and hung and then it kind of wiggled and then it stopped. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But I haven't really seen them up close, so. Yeah, they're really weird. So kittenass are called arrow worms. Yeah. They're actually chordates. Do they have a, a fully developed jaw or are they kind no, of earlier? No, they don't have a fully developed jaw. Okay. Well, actually, I don't know if they're chord. They're like, they've got a notochord, so like they're not really they're like in they're between being chordates. chordates yeah yeah sort of like so sort of like those other there. ones larvations or uh what's the other one tunicates are chordates. Okay. Um, as larva they have uh like a, a a spinal cord kind of thing but then when they become adults they just become squishy lumps of silliness it's like mm -hmm. they're they grew a backbone and then they lost it. Yeah, pretty much. They're like, you know what? As adults, we're just gonna sit around and and not be super evolved. Sean, you should suggest to add that to your ONC Marine Life Field Guide because it's not in there. I'm Which looking ones? under chordates. Yeah, I think we need some major yeah. updates to that. Yeah. But this we're, is super helpful. We're, 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 do, we're gonna hopefully do a major overhaul soon. Yeah. Um, I'm actually involved in a new meeting series that's going to be held uh, to determine species list around our bioregions coming up. On, so I think our first meeting's on the 24th, so it'll be a really good first step mm -hmm. um, talking to our, our colleagues and other organizations um, to try and get a concise list. I like the visual pictures in this field guide. Yes, very helpful. It is useful it is for helpful. the visualizations, mm -hmm. but there have since been other um, tools that I think could be of good use for biologists or anyone really trying to identify things. Uh, for example, iNaturalist is a really good resource for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think... Um, With think iNaturalist, can you take a photo? Yep. of the screen and it'll still yeah it's mm -hmm. it's driven by oh, citizen cool. science uh but of course there are also um organization projects there um like i'm pretty sure dfo has a uh a seamount project there that tries to capture all known species um, of a specific seamount they do that a couple of times for each sea mount around the bioregions.
Oh yeah, they changed the light earlier. I don't know, I feel like... No. Oh no, that's really hard to read. Um, there's something with a button. You could always use this too. Uh, yeah. Uh. You're welcome.
Okay, so have we seen anything cool? Have we seen anything cool? Yeah. I mean, everything's cool, Pete. Sure. Have we seen anything earth shattering? Like <laughs> no, something you haven't no, seen not yet? at all. Okay. I haven't seen anything super exciting. <laughs> Mostly just this. Yep. A lot of this. Did we actually confirm there was a shark sighting today? Yeah, oh, on the surface? Yeah, there's a shark on the surface. Oh. I saw it. Yeah. Oh, you saw it? How much of it did you actually see, though? Yeah, we weren't sure it was a shark. Okay. It was our best <laughs> guess. I saw the dorsal fin. Yeah, there was like a small dorsal fin, and it had a wake behind it. It was moving pretty fast. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was, went after some tuna. I could go for some tuna. Same. How big are your tuna around here? I don't think we have much tuna, to be honest. I think yeah. they were albacore. They were pretty small. Oh, okay. I was going to say, uh, because I think I heard Dirk saying it was probably a blue shark. And then Megan oh. said yeah. blue sharks aren't very big. They're like the size of reef shark. So depending on the tuna, tuna would <laughs> be bigger <laughs> than that yeah. shark. I don't think Dirk knows what type of shark it was. <laughs> I, was I mean, like. Sometimes people think tuna are sharks because they're oh, fast and they uh -huh. have a dorsal fin. Interesting. So and they'll I'm be at the surface. So you're just like, oh, well, it must be a shark. But It was pretty big. It was much bigger than the tuna we saw. So meeting more than a few feet? Yeah. I mean, there was some drone footage. Three feet. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. Our own video survey. <laughs> Who got drone footage? Dirk. Yeah. What? Yeah. Maybe uh, he saw probably, another shark. Probably around 4, 4.30? Oh, it's a different sighting. This afternoon. Well. I'm guessing we didn't see the shark on recovery then, right? It didn't really get that close to the ROV. Mm. It was kind of out there. <laughs> What's a sleeper shark? They're very tired. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's saying they saw one on an ONC dive in the past. So is that a Canadian shark? Uh, I have no idea, honestly. I know on a very rare occasion we'll get six gill sharks, which are deep water sharks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we have those in Hawaii. Yeah. So I, I don't... I'm not familiar with the term sleeper shark. Oh, Steph is looking it up right now. Kind of just looks like a fish with a shark head. Yeah, it looks like they're in our region mm -hmm. for sure. Are they pelagic or they live near the bottom? Surface to 2,000 meters. Mm. Okay. They're pretty funny looking. Yeah, they are. Their body looks very fish-like. I wonder if that's what we saw. It doesn't look like it has a very... Yeah, because it just had a really flat... Oh, like a fin. Flat dorsal fin. Yeah. But uh, there was two sightings yesterday, it sounds like. Mm. So. Huh. I'm surprised there are any sharks around, considering I saw dolphins today. You did see dolphins. They tend to not like each other. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say in that scenario, who's the prey? I think dolphins just harass sharks. No, they, they don't really eat them. Okay. Yeah. They just don't like them. They have a grudge. 
<laughs> and what would an orca whale, what would happen there if orca whale comes in contact with any this species of shark? It really depends. I think orcas have such a, a wide variety of diets depending on, you know, uh, their lifestyle. Uh, you have the transients, the offshore, and then the the local resident types. Um, so maybe offshore or transients would try to eat shark or well, actually, I think I, for sure the offshore ones eat shark. Um, I'm starting to remember there have been some ch uh, chat of uh, orca teeth being like super ground down as because shark like meat is like very s sandy or like I believe it's the, uh, I don't know, their skin's very sandy feeling. So like if you eat enough of it, it grinds down your teeth. Mm. So there's evidence of them preying on sharks exclusively. Sounds like you're trying to maintain some kind of pecking order there. It's fascinating Pete. to me. It's <laughs> yeah. just, you know, who's at the top of the food chain? Food chain, depending on where.
thing kind of looks like it has a long fin too, though, in the back. It has like a long fin in the back too, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That one has a really long tail. Megan, we're still debating what type of shark could possibly be found in these waters. Oh, down here? Yeah. Uh, no, on the surface where we were. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a number of sharks that live in this area. Uh, but the most common is the blue shark. Oh, I thought I had just like a little nub, the one I saw. But, but saw at this depth, sharks. we wouldn't see sharks at all. No. <sighs> but we're getting there, Jake. Yeah, it says 30 minutes. 30-ish minutes. Almost there. Almost there. Should I explain Yeah, is this all supposed to be relative? Because some of these are kind of small. That's possible. This guy? Surface to 470. Yeah? Two meters. Do a small shark. Soup fin. Yeah, these sheets are great. Yeah, the sleeper shark up to 14 feet. <laughs> Baby sleeper. I think it's this one. No, it seems like a good guess. We have an ID. Yeah, because it did have a proud fin. Megan, have you heard of a taupe? 
Soup fin shark. Oh, toad soup. Toad -P. P. No, I haven't heard of that. Looks like a little guy. Uh, sounds cute. Mm -hmm. Well, is he taupe? It sounds like he might be tasty, which is why his common name is soup fin. <laughs> yeah, people do like to make oh, oh, soup shit. out of sharks. Yeah, sad. Found in offshore waters. <laughs> it's usually near the bottom, though. <laughs> Are these raisins not raisins? That's concerning. What would they be? They taste like, I don't know, blueberries to me. Oh, you mean like dried other fruit? I yeah. think there were dried blueberries in there. Oh, okay. Okay. All I know is that it was a very large container for raisins. Like, yes. are we all clamoring for raisins? <laughs> well, we've run out of fresh fruit. <laughs> looking for alternatives. All bran. <laughs> Ideally not all bran. <laughs> you could put your dried fruit in the all bran. No, it's true. Uh, here we go. Found 
a list of saltwater fin fish, rockfish, groundfish, sturgeon, all kinds of fish in British Columbia. Awesome. Do, so the people who put together your marine life field guide, those are ones that are verified you saw out on a dive, right? Yeah, so our marine life field guide, are, it's like an in-house publication. Um, it's been around for a long time. I think it was created in 2014. Um, and yes, all of the, I guess, photo stock that you see in, in um, that publication is, is from our own dives and um, w what our researchers determined were the various species. So. But what I'm looking at now is, uh, it looks like a DFO version online. It's Does quite it break it down into different regions or? No, it's, mm, I was kind of, uh, it looks like it just breaks it down into um, like categories. So, you know, you have rockfish, groundfish, sturgeon, shellfish, crab, salmon and trout. I think it's mostly for sport fishing, honestly. Oh, interesting. Oh, but there's albacore tuna. Okay. Does it say how big it gets around these parts? They can grow to well over a meter in length and weigh more than 50 kilograms. Does that mean anything to you? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, a meter is like what? 2.3 feet? Yeah, I would say. Three feet ish. Video is going to go offline for a minute. Okay. I'll be back. Are we there yet? Stephanie, nope. our dive chief on this one? For the meters. next 200 meters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're letting AJ get a bit more sleep. Home oh. stretch, home stretch. Yeah, not bad, 200 meters or so left. Yep. 250. Yeah. About 25 minutes. Enjoy it. Things are going to get chaotic. <laughs> oh, yeah? What yeah. part of that makes you think that? Oh, just the deck work after. Oh, oh. Yeah. How did the last mooring Not sure. I was asleep. retrieval go? It was a really long mooring. I heard it there went well. There's a dive plan now. Oh, we do have a dive plan? Yeah. Part B, straw recovery.
So you guys will be on the ground just in time to switch watches. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Doesn't watch change at three, two? You're right. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, but how about an hour? hour? How on the bottom? An hour. You'll have an hour, sorry. Darn, I was thinking it was 2.30. Uh, sorry to, to break your hopes and dreams. <laughs>
We can turn it off and check, but it was almost immediately when we turned on the crafts. Didn't change that much. No, it didn't. It's less than a hundred K. Picking up Doppler beams. The end is near. <laughs> yeah. So close. Three beams. So far. Four beams. Okay, coming out of auto. Ninety meter altitude. Is there any way you can kind of fix that background buzz that's happening? I think it may be coming from Steph's mind. I hear it on SPL. Yeah. But when Steph unmuted, that's when it started. Do you want to mute for a second? Yeah, it's Steph's mic. She just muted herself and the buzzing stopped. She's at science left. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's something with the power supply for her laptop there that could be plugged into the same power that the comps panel is. Uh, yeah, that's better. Can I plug it in anywhere else? Well, we can find out. <laughs> it's, it's probably all on the same circuit. Yeah, that happened again. 
That's so weird. People yeah. plugged in here and it's not been an issue. Do you want to try this one? Sure. Yeah, it could be the power supply. Are you still hearing it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll just keep myself muted while I'm charging. <laughs> Could mean your power supplies having issues. Well, we saw that with the Starlink power supply that was um, causing some issues with the data position. So, not that there's anything wrong with Starlink. It just was. Maybe you need to better shield your uh, electronics. <laughs> I think that's more of a Ed, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's on a ship. Yeah. That has no ground. The right cores. Forty meter altitude. It's also a ship that uses a completely different style of power than everything that's in this room. You might be able to try if you need to charge it plugging into uh, a spot up in the studio there uh, if you need if you can be without accessing it for a little bit um, do you guys typically use your own laptops when you're in the back row or do you use yeah I've never ones? I mean not me but whoever's sitting here usually has something plugged in and I've never heard that before can we wait till after the ROV crashes into the seabed to have that <laughs> discussion. Not gonna sure, crash. Crash sure. landing. Not like we're gonna hurt anything at 10 meters a minute. <laughs> Focus. <laughs> Gerardo heading on? Yes. Why is it spinning? Uh, it's on. Zero the blue buttons there on the thrusters. The lateral and uh, yeah, those two. Zero, zero. Yeah, you put a, there's a wrap in the 6.8. You have to come around once you get to the bottom. Well, that's because here we're talking about power. Seven meters off bottom. I see it. Look at that cucumber. The little one off to the right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's actually kind of big. It's just <laughs> far right. away. Perspective-wise, it's tiny. I'll stop on the winch. I'll stop on the winch. back up Danny so he can take those turns out and I want to do that on a 25 meter delta. Morning. Morning. Yep. You're just in time. <coughs> well he has half of a uh, wrap and I have half, oh, just over half of a wrap. Oh I'm at a negative he's at a positive. Never mind. I think there's a bag down there. Oh, but I think that's Jake's bag.
<clears throat> Can you bring it down to 10 meter divisions? Yeah, sure. And are we on DVL now? We are. Okay. What? Doesn't look like it's showing up. No so snail trail. I don't know. I have like click things on and off a bunch of times for it to show up. Yeah, supposedly you have to activate the layer or something. That's what Renny was saying. Oh, there's this invisible checkbox that you have to check here. Uh. Um, that usually does it. Okay, coming back down. It's still not snailing. No snail. Good morning. If I change morning. this number, this happened one time. All right, are we on bottom? We are. Beautiful. Are we, do we need to move the ship to get us to the IP? We sure do. All right, can we do that? Absolutely. Excellent. All right, let's see. Oh, we're kind of far away, aren't we? How far? 100 meters away. Oh. Yeah, IP's down here. We got a couple steps to make. Sure do. Or one big one. Bridge nav. Good morning. Are you ready to drive the ship? <laughs> okay. Uh, we need to go 100 meters. One nine five. All right, thanks. And on our way, we can see all these cucumbers. Yeah. <coughs> and a crab. Well, that one's different than the ones we've been seeing. It's a nice crab. It's not Rennie's. a spider crab. Yeah, we've seen a lot of spider crabs. Yes. Rennie's got that funky uh, There's a snow trail. background layer in there. There it is. Again. Sometimes that green's really hard to see. So I just clicked this on and off a few times, and then it came up. Huh. Uh, and you can turn off the bathy uh, thing. I don't know why he puts it in you, there. You I know you don't like it. I do not. Uh, it's just distracting. It's flat anyways. Admin, admin, I believe. Letting the world know that, that uh, those credentials, but it's fine. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. true. Well, then it can't get into our van, so. Our hydraulic names didn't change. Is that because we haven't restarted the GUI? Check in the bottom cage tick, all the stuff they're, recorded. They're, they're, uh, hasn't restarted on that computer, but it's restarted here. Gotcha. Look, a fish. You want to look at it? Yeah, let's go look at it. <laughs> you can uh, restart your GUI if you want, Danny, and I'll update the names. Okay. Let's click the... Uh, are you talking about the hydraulic names? Yeah. That's uh, it's a rat tail. Yep. 
Cory Fenoides. Not to be mistaken with the spotted ratfish. Mm. Yeah, those are very different things. Yeah. Some people get confused because they both have rat in their common name. Yeah. I mean, you could call these grenadiers. That's their yeah, other common name. Right? Yep. Yeah, old hurt. It's funny that it has three it shadows. That's because we've got lots of lights. <laughs> at least three. It, yeah, we have at least three lights. Zoom quick video. Can you white balance on this fish? <laughs> <laughs> I think I could. <laughs> I'm going to steal your uh, bubble cam. Yep, go for it. Oh, oh there it goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Crash landing. Both Good action shot. Look at that. <laughs> Did he catch something? I think he just ran into the ground. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh, no, now the sea cucumber's upset. <laughs> I'm guessing he didn't see too well with our lights flat up. <laughs> yeah. This will be a perfect time for Danny to drive, right, Dan? Okay. Sure. It's flat. We got to go 100 meters. Yeah. When you guys are ready, uh, I'd love to white balance. All right. One second. Is the ship moving? Yeah, it is. How fast? Uh, 0.3 knots. Okay. We can probably do it quick while Argus waits to move, or Atalanta. Yeah, we've got like 12, 12 minutes before yeah. we start right. moving. As soon as you're done with that gauge check, Danny, bring out the arm for white balance. As long as you got the uh, comps, you can fill in the other malarkey later. Yeah, we're all good. All good? Nominal? Everything's nominal. Ground lights coming on. Ground fault check, check. <laughs> check, check. And porch lights and lasers off, please. Porch light is physically disconnected. Scratch gives me a, a focus point. Huh. Purposeful. All right, you're gonna see it go dark for a second. Is your sonar a different color? Yep. It's like purple. Did you do that, Dan? I did not. Negative. Huh. Bring it down to 20 for you, though. Or you want 10? 20 is fine. I'm going to change the color. I don't know. View? Maybe go to view? I or, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Environment? No. Oh, colors. Stow the arm. 
Okay. Oh. Oh, blue. That's kind of fun. So many cucumbers. <laughs> You yeah. could make a whole salad. Blue. Oh, what's in that hole? I don't know. Huh. Are you happy with blue or do you want something different? You can uh, put it back to the default color. The night shift was probably the that other shift. That's really weird. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. It's very Ooh. strange. Is it like... Gummy? Or is it just like. Can I zoom it there? looks gelatinous. Yeah. Before I dust it up. That is interesting. Is it some kind of. Uh, it's like a whole bunch of jellies? Huh. I don't know. Huh. Whatever it is. That is weird. Uh, yeah, it's super weird. I dust it all up. Very strange. Well, it anymore. looks biological. It oh. doesn't look particularly living. There's a sea pig. Sea pig. Get back in the box and then we can switch out. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I think this is the site that, depending on when we come, there's just so many sea pigs. Yeah. March of the sea pigs, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Oh. A no. herd of sea pigs? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Could be related to, um, um, like some kind of migration event. Yeah, they just they just kind of wander around. Hmm. But sometimes these animals like congregate yeah, for reproduction. Yeah, congregate for mating or something. Yeah. Yeah. One nine five. One nine five. Oh, up on ahead. Auto heading in depth on right now. There's some other sort of schmutz there at the bottom. Yeah. Curious. And you're right in the middle of the box and we're just moving moving ahead south. One nine five. You wanna stay down at like two meters or Yeah. Your Z bias isn't dialed in, but you could Maybe bring it to like minus 20. Oh, cable in sight. Minus 20? Yeah. Yep, we're certain we crossed over the hydrophone. Or you could just fly it with no, no Z bus. That looks like the hydrophone cable, so we can follow that. Follow the cable. Take us there. Oh, well, I have auto dip on. No wonder why this thing's going everywhere. I'm not working. <laughs> I'm like, why am I not getting control? One nine five. One nine five. Yeah, follow the cable. It'll take you to your destination. Okay. I'm imagining Dan wants me to fly mm. manual. Yeah, get a feel for it. I can come down a couple meters, but you're tugging on the vehicle a little bit, so you're out ahead. 
Okay, that's yeah. good. That slow down a little bit. Slow okay. down, check stuff out. Look at all these good things. That guy's just vibing on the seafloor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just vibing. Mm -hmm. You said D bias of like minus 20? Yeah, like minus 20. That's, is that positive 20? Well, I'd give it down, and those yeah. go down, and Z bias takes it down. Right? Yeah, you, so you're going to minus 20, yeah. Other this way. way? Yep. Keep going. Something like that. Gotcha. So you pro we won't have to thrust as much to keep the vehicle down. It'll just bias that in. Oh, long way. Nav, how large was the ship move you called? A hundred meters. It's done. We're oh. just finishing up our. We're just waiting for Adelaide to swing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's coming. Oh, nice. Yeah, normally I would move during our descent, but since we were doing the transect on the way down, I wanted to keep position. There's another cable. Yeah, also there are tall moorings around here, so. Yeah, that's you. Oh, I got joy getting 100%. I don't know why I'm like hauling out. Apples. Yeah, full, you got full beans. Full beans. All the beans. There's an Alvin weight. Dep depending on the pilot, they like to either fly full, full 100% all the time, or some people just dial it in like all over the place. What, what depends on what they're doing. Well, I was like barely moving the stick, and it was just zoom, zoom. Yeah. Someone on, on SPL is, on Someone on the SPL is asking about trash in deep sea. Didn't we find a plastic bag yesterday? See a plastic bag on one of our Yeah, guys? we saw a plastic bag. Yeah. Um, we often see trash on the seafloor, even in places where we're not, you know, putting things on the seafloor for right. science. It's, uh, it's a unfortunate pretty common occurrence. Yeah. Even in some of the deepest parts of the ocean, we're seeing the influence of humanity's garbage. Yep. Right the oh, that leash. was the IP. There it is. There it is. So once we get enough leash, um, we can move to the west, and we'll, we can follow another cable west, southwest. So it'll be that cable off to the right. Oh, we want to get a fix here at the IP. We no, did that we last were, time. We were just here. We don't have to do it again. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, this cable. Hopefully it hasn't moved This is last that night's much. IP? Yeah. Yeah. Depends on which heading. We're going to keep going. So the first mooring that we're going to investigate is 65 meters away. So now, I don't know if you want to call that move in. Um, sure. If we want to keep going, 60 meters. Oh. Yep. Bridge nav. So we're going. Can we west, go 60 right? meters west? It's 
the package is not quite west, southwest. Do we have more leash to the south? Um, well, I know that those uh, moorings are over there. Yeah, okay. So, we can stay uh, yeah, there. well, I'm going to be cautious and we yep. can just slowly approach. Sure. in the box? Uh, a little bit. I'm pulling Atalanta around. Yeah, yeah. I can feel that now. This way. Nope. Take them out. No, it was going up. Remember, it was going up. No, there we go. Okay. Like, how far south are we going here? So the the package. It might be hard to spin when the you're morning that we're looking at is 240 first. degrees from the IP. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to straw one. Yeah. Okay. Fringe nav. No, oh, you're nowhere near it. Uh, look at my tail cam. Can we <laughs> adjust our um, bearing to 210? Um, just just uh, adjust the next 20 meters to 210.
So, Jake, you guys have Iris on bubble? Bubble, yes. Would you mind, for giggles, turning that down a little bit? I don't know why it's so... My... Yeah, it's extremely bright. Oh, you had to click on it. <sighs> nope, yeah. Is there an auto iris for it? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now Atlanta is starting at swing west. So you're going to want to come back west. Okay. Start heading that way along the ship move. So if you come up, spin around. So I can go either direction now, because I'm at zero. Yeah, you can go either, either direction. So you can always take out a rapid later. Yeah, you can swap over to There's a fun little sea star. So am I heading to now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Making friends with the cables. Slow down, Daniel. A little more west. You'll start tugging Atlanta again if you keep going south. Southwest. What's our target heading? Um, west. Yeah, so you're going to want to go 250. At least according to my map. So our target, target heading is 250, but you're starting to get stretched out from Atlanta. I so gotcha. you may have to lateral right until the ship move is complete, like come back over into the box. Or yeah. you could turn and fly north 20 meters. Yeah. yeah. Fly or else you're going to continue down. to get kind of tugged around. That cable there will take you where you want to go. Or you can have the navigator move to a uh, step south if you want to follow the cable. What do you want me to do, Dan? Oh, I was just telling Danny to get out of his predicament there. There's two options he has. So we want to follow this cable, right? Yeah, we probably have the lease for that. We can probably follow that. Yeah, typically we follow the cable. It's the easiest way to not, not get lost. Yeah. I, think we'll our, I think our current ship move will be okay for this. We'll stay see on, the camera, or we'll see the mooring in the... Slow down, Danny. Well. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow Wait for uh, Atalanta. So now you're kind of, see you're kind of within like 25, 30 meters of Atalanta. That's a good distance to be. And just kind of slowly along this cable as they both move along together. You can trek along. You can bring the heading room head of Atalanta around a So what I do when I first started flying this thing, I would zoom around and... <laughs> do exactly what you're doing. Yank <laughs> Atalanta all over yeah. the place. Yeah. It took me quite a while to get used to. Yeah, it's not a video game. You can't just go running around. No, you can't just push the stick to the stop. <laughs> no, <laughs> your, your, yeah. your leash yanked. I'm just learning. Yeah, it takes a lot of getting used to. So. Yeah, it's totally different. Now that Megan's experienced, she's <laughs> giving you pointers. <laughs> Megan's had a lot of time in that uh, navigator seat watching pi different pilots. Yeah, that's true. I'm she usually busy doing other things like manipulating and not really She should have a good flying. sense of uh, what's too fast also <laughs> because she looks at a lot of I ROV the, video. Yeah, I watch the video. If it goes too <laughs> fast and you're like, ah, you didn't look at any things, you're flying too high. Yeah, we have lots of opinions. <laughs> Let's pretend you're walking from one side of the deck to the other, and that should take one minute. 
if you're looking down at your feet doing that, picture what that looks like looking down with the ROV camera, which is the same. So it's kind of a bummer we don't have uh, DVL speed anymore. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with that? I got to talk to Brittany about that. We did. He's put in a ticket with the, the author of the software. Ah, the author. That CQ Cucumber is going to take off for us. I'm sure I can figure that out. Let's check him out. He's going to dance for you. Oh, look at that. Yeah, go ahead and... Uh, you should poke around in it. It's probably okay. just one little setting. It's, that's that's a, probably an easy one. There's a bunch of plugins and blah, yeah. blah. Go ahead, video. The DVL data is all there. I love when they so do this. It is. It's it makes me happy. It's probably just like click, checking a box or something. We poked around in there, but, you know, we're just checking boxes. That is so cool. Yeah. He's trying. Go ahead, video. <laughs> Kind of looks like a guy really enjoying his uh, rock show. <laughs> <laughs> head banging. Yeah, full head bang. Yeah. If only I had that kind of flexibility. <laughs> now this is something Dan would always tell me when I was first learning to fly, but move the vehicle and not the camera and you get a better shot. Yeah. Fly the vehicle, not the camera. Gotcha. Yep. I was just tilting up because I was looking down. No, I know, I know. But just something to keep in the back of your mind. It's a good shot. That is sort of mesmerizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you move the camera, it jacks up the, uh, our lighting is dialed for in the front. So now that you've moved it, you got that, you know, Oh, the lighting oh. gets all wonky. I didn't turn the camera. All I did was just point up a little bit. Yeah. That's also why I like my Z bias light, so I can let go of it and it floats up. But yeah. yeah. As soon as you look up or sideways, the lighting's wonky. Okay. You're full wide. Full wide. Okay. Zoom in a little bit. There you go. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Past the thing. Yep. Yep. So, as Dan was saying. Yeah, that's a good angle. See the dark. Oh, what's that well, thing on the bottom? Porch. See the dark band at the oh. top? Yeah, there's a, well, we got that junk sticking know, out I on just, the porch. That gives me an idea of where, where yeah. I am. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I. I now Atlanta's uh, going to be driving away from me. I typically don't move the camera until, unless I'm landed, then I can't move the vehicle. That's when I move the camera. The rest gotcha. of the time I hardly ever touch that lever. So you'll follow it up by flying up and gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, but wow, look at all these creatures. Ooh, oh, there's so many creatures. I want to see this weird white creature. The little guy? Which one? Yeah, that little one. That hydrozoan looking thing? I think it might be a sea pen. Oh, yeah. I'm going to kill it with my... Uh, Your dust cloud? Dust mm -hmm. cloud. I think there was another one off to the right. Hopefully not literally. Not no, really not literally. We just won't yes. see it. Yes, just want to clarify. So, so, so you're flying kind of low, so you're probably going to bring a dust cloud with you wherever you go right now. Your altitude's 